What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. I know a bunch of y'all know deer meat for dinner. We're out here at his ranch right now. I am sick and tired of the hogs tearing up the road. Every time I come out here, there's hog rooting here, hog rooting there. Well, guess what? We got the Howa. We got Robert behind the camera of all people. Robert's filming me this morning. And we're gonna go try to dust us a big old hog. So we have some extra pork to cook on Christmas Eve dinner. What a lot of y'all don't know is Gabe is pretty devastating with a rifle in his hand. I brought 10 bullets. He's shooting my 6.5 Creedmoor, and uh, hopefully we have a lot more than just one hog on the buggy. When you're shooting hog, where do you aim? Somewhere in between the nose and the tail. I aim right behind the shoulder if I can, if not, right in the shoulder. Alright y'all, we're pulling up on feeder number two. It's always important to come from downwind. That way they can't smell you, and a lot of times if there's a good breeze, they won't even hear you because the wind's pushing the noise from them to you, pushing it away from them. That's what you call a hog problem. got to that shot. I thought I was gonna have to go up there and take the gun from him. I'm trying to get the... There's more hogs here. Keep shooting. Oh my goodness. Out of bullets. See? That's why I told you. If you're going to kill hogs, bring a bunch of bullets. We came up here, there's a nice eight point, but the eight point wouldn't even go to the feeder because all the hogs were there. So, you gotta knock them out. 
There's at least 10 more right now at the feeder, and we just got done shooting 30 seconds ago. Some might think this is cruel, some might think it's just horrible, but you got to thin the herd, and this is how we just did it. We grew up doing this. Our ancestors did this. Now they might not have had the technology that we had, but nonetheless, our ancestors did this. It's in our blood, it's what we do. And these little shoats right here, oh, I can already taste it. I'm gonna skin them whole, crack them right down the middle and lay them in my smoker and cook them all day while I'm editing my crab video. You know it's gonna be good. This is like that when you shop in the grocery store and there's buy one, get one free. That's what this is. They're fat. What have they been eating? Corn. That's a protein feeder. That's where the deer come to feed on the protein. Then they come out here and feed underneath this castaway feeder. And as you can see, that what I love about that feeder is it throws corn in a huge area. As soon as the feeder went up, all them hogs ran out to it. So we got like five of them out of that pack and guaranteed the ones that made it are high-tailing it somewhere else. Deer have a home range, and that home range is where they live. Wild hog has no home range. A wild hog goes where there's low pressure and good food. So these hogs now know that this ain't safe. All right, y'all, we got big hogs, we got little ones, we got black ones, and we got brown ones. Clean this one just like you do a little hog. You gotta take your time, though, because their skin's real tender and real sensitive to cutting through it. All right, I wanna hear y'all's opinion. Which hog do you think would be best? This little wild hog that grew up eating organic food, acorns, palmetto berries, some of deer meat's corn, or the same size hog that grew up in a feed house eating all kinds of, you know, hog food that has hormones in it to make them get bigger faster so they can make more money off of them, and the hog gains more weight. Let me know what y'all think. So little hogs like this can almost be harder to clean than a big hog because their skin's so tender you can cut through it so fast. But just take your time, use a good knife, and it'll all work out. As you can see, me and Gabe are both wearing our Tyson's outdoor gear. It's a new camouflage company that we've been wearing this year. I can tell you straight up, it's the most comfortable, quiet, good price camouflage I've ever seen. And uh, I think they had a great idea having high quality, low price, direct from the manufacturer to the consumer. The only place you can get it is online and use Blue Gabe's promo code. What's your promo code? Blue Gabe. Use promo code Blue Gabe. Little tech tip. Anytime you're deboning, Robert and I grew up using a knife and cutting the joints off like that. But I wanna take this little pig and cut him right down the middle so I can lay each half. If you cook it whole like that in a smoker and not on a spit, it won't cook right. So I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. That's about five, six pounds of meat. That'd cost you a lot of money if you were at Publix. Always important to bring ice with you when you're hunting. You don't ever want your meat to get hot. You see y'all at the house. All right, y'all, I'm back. See that cooler full of meat? That's right, it's time to put it on this grill. Obviously, I'm going with the can cooker, but on today's video, because y'all don't see me cook a bunch of wild game, I'm also busting out the Everglades. So see how I disconnected the hams, the ribs, and the front shoulders. I know that's pretty loud, that grill, but just gotta deal with it, I'm by myself. And now we wait. I'm gonna put it at 200 degrees for about, probably an hour and a half, two hours, 
Then I'm doing something totally different to it. So don't go nowhere. It's going to get real here in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Now this part's going to be a little bit tricky for me to film. So I'm going to take all these pieces inside and show you all exactly what I'm going to do with them. And I'm telling you right now, I just got home from Publix. I've already started getting it prepared and it's going to be so good. So this pan and this pan is exactly the same, except for this one has a little bit more beef broth in it. See what I'm working with? Half a hog, half a hog. A little bit more beef broth, a little bit less beef broth. Here comes the trick. Taking a little bit of this salsa. I'm just gonna pour it in there. This one is going to be spicy. I can already tell you all that. But I love spiciness, so it's all right. Take a little bit of lemon. Mm, mm, mm. This one, I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil. Now that one's done. Look at that. Now, here's the hard part about cooking and filming on your, on your own. I just poked a hole in it somehow. Spilled it all over my floor. And now I gotta figure out how to fix this problem. But that's life. Just keep on rolling. All right, well, I got them in there. Convection bake about 350 for probably an hour and a half. Now, I'm sorry the quality of this is a little bit less than normal. I don't have a cameraman. I had one. Robert was putting corn in the feeders and called and said he's got to come out there. So, back by myself. Here he comes. This is mouth of the south. Oh, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all. We done turned those itty bitty little piggies. Can you smell it? I can't smell it yet. Look at that. So this is one. This one's more for like the Mexican style. It's got green chili sauce, carrots, all kinds of good stuff. And this one is something that's like a piece of art. But this one's gonna taste better in my opinion. That's a great way to take a wild, destructive animal and turn it into a delicious meal. Look at that. Now, preferably I would have liked to cook this for another two or three hours, but Robert wasn't having no part of that. He's hungry now. Look at that though. Look how juicy it is. Mmm. Oops. Do you like green chilies, Robert? I love green chilies. What about you, Mr. Quiet Mike? Who loves this camera angle right now? Drop a thumbs up. When it comes to beavers, did you enjoy hunting them more or eating them more? <laughs> How you gonna ask me a question like that right now? Well, I mean, the, the hunt's obviously fun. Eating them's really good too. It's definitely better than I thought. I've had way worse. <laughs> Now, like I said before, this could have cooked for two hours more, but I didn't have that time, so Robert's gonna test it out for me. It's got a very organic and, and natural flavor to it. I like it. Can yeah. you taste any of the corn that it was eating right before we got it? The texture is very nice as well. Um, it seems to me to be clean meat. very lovely experience I must say. I feel close to the earth while I eat this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is awesome. Um, everything else is true also. There's something real natural, organic, and good about eating game that you went out and hunted. You see those feeders? Those feeders don't grow there. We put them there. We maintain them. We keep them full of corn. We keep the batteries going. And that those feeders make that area healthy and popular for game, whether it's turkeys or deer or hogs or dove or quail or anything else that comes to that area. All the different birds that you will see there. Yeah, we do harvest some of the hogs. We don't harvest deer over the feeders, but those feeders create life and maintain life on our property. I'm here staring at this big alligator. I gave it for awesome. Who wants to see a video of me having that thing mounted, like the hunt, cleaning it, getting it mounted, and hanging it on that wall? Mm. Mm. 
I tried my hardest to kill one bigger than that this year and didn't get it done. Y'all, that's a wrap. We forgot to say blessing too, but hey, we're only human. Thanks for liking, thanks for sharing. All you guys that share on Facebook, Instagram, sending it to your grandma, texting it to your buddy. Appreciate all of it. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit subscribe. Like Jake always says, though, we're getting up out of here and we're getting the heck out of shape. We gone.